Hello there today, All Day Family. Thanks for joining us. So glad to have you with us. Even happier that my pal Chanel Jones is here. Four letters, TGIS. I love it. That is right, Savannah. It's Friday, our favorite day of the week here in Studio 1A. Welcome to our digital show, Today in 30, after we close out the week here today with another big show. Yeah, first the latest on Bill Clinton's health scare, the former president hospitalized in California with an infection it wasn't related to COVID. Then the alarming disappearance of the American bumblebee. We'll take a deeper look at what's behind their vanishing numbers and how it may impact everything from the food you eat to the economy. Plus, Harry Smith brings us an incredible story of one local newspaper's fight for survival and why it's so crucial for that community. And the one and only Ludacris paid us a visit on the third hour, what he shared with us about his new animated series. I can't wait one more second, Chanel. We gotta start it. We always kind of do this together. Oh, Are I'm ready. ready for oh, absolutely. Today, Today in 30. 30. We'll start with NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer, who is at the hospital this morning. Miguel, good morning to you. Savannah, good morning. Mr. Clinton is reportedly in good spirits, now resting comfortably in the hospital behind me about an hour outside of Los Angeles. But overnight, reports revealing the former president's infection, which is not related to COVID, was serious. This morning, former President Bill Clinton on the mend after spending the night in the ICU. Overnight, Hillary Rodham Clinton visiting her husband at the University of California Irvine Medical Center, where he's been since Tuesday. A source telling NBC News his original diagnosis was a urinary infection that morphed into something broader. The hospital keeping Mr. Clinton in intensive care as a precautionary measure to isolate him, a person close to the former president tells NBC News. In a joint statement, his doctors expressing optimism, writing in part, after two days of treatment, his white blood cell count is trending down and he is responding to antibiotics well. We hope to have him go home soon. The 75-year-old with family history of heart disease has had two major operations in the past. In 2004, after experiencing chest pains and shortness of breath, Mr. Clinton underwent a quadruple coronary bypass surgery in New York. And in 2010, he received two stents in a blocked coronary artery, overhauled his diet and his lifestyle afterwards, going vegan and losing weight. The former president telling Jenna on Today in 2010 about the impact his bypass surgery has had on his life. How do you balance everything, the stress of rebuilding Haiti, your global initiative, your foundation, travel, family? Well, sometimes I don't. It's a constant struggle, you know, even at my age. When I had my, my serious surgery five years ago, almost six years ago now, I realized that I'd been given like a new lease on life. Now this morning, another major health scare for the former president, said to be taking it in stride. President Clinton was in California for an event that he was admitted to on the hospital here on Tuesday. We are told that he should be released from the hospital in the coming days, although the exact date still remains unclear. We're back in our ongoing series today, Climate, and this morning, a small species with a big impact on the planet. Al gets excited because that's Flight of the Bumblebee. Yeah, that's exactly. That's excited. Yeah. Learns to play that. The American bumblebee, which is not the same as a honeybee, has declined by nearly 90% across the U.S., and now there's a new push to protect it under the Endangered Species Act. Yeah, NBC's Carrie Sander joins us now from Washington with more. And, of course, Carrie is always dressed for the part. Okay. Carrie, great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. A little protection. We're at a bee rescue here. More than a million bees that have been taken from homes, buildings, from trees and schoolyards. And what we're looking at here is worldwide, not just the American bumblebee, but honeybees, all types of bees are in decline. Let's listen to these just for a moment. And as we listen, you could say that the buzz is, the fear is that the American bumblebee is now possibly facing extinction. On a warm Washington afternoon, it didn't take long to find bees. Look, it's a bumblebee. But while it may seem like bees are plentiful, that's not the case in much of the U.S. for the American bumblebee. So these bees are really suffering from pesticide use, uh, habitat loss, and the effects of climate change. 
Bombus pennsylvanicus has vanished from at least eight states already and is critically endangered in many more, according to the Center for Biological Diversity. Dr. Amy Johnson is an ecologist in the farmlands of Virginia. Why should we worry about the American bumblebee? So the American bumblebee represents what's happening to all pollinators. Our pollinators are declining at unprecedented rates. Even the youngest among us understand without bees, the plants that rely on them will die. We know nothing can pollinate our flowers anymore and make them big and beautiful. But there is still a chance to save them. Conservation groups point to the successful comebacks of other species, including the giant panda, which is still at risk, the wild turkey, and the bald eagle, which rebounded after the pesticide DDT was outlawed. Scientists hope if American bumblebees are protected, they'll also recover, and even home gardeners can be part of the solution. Cease or adjust your pesticide use. Plant native plants and or get, become involved in citizen science efforts to help us understand these pollinators better. Already, two species of bumblebees are considered extinct. At the pace they're disappearing, the fear is nationwide the American bumblebee could be next. So, Carrie, big picture, if this trend continues, how much of an impact could it have on things like the economy and our food industry? Well, that's the biggest concern because bee populations in general around the world are in decline. I'll take you back to third grade. Remember about we learned about pollination. Sure. The, the bees actually pollinate, for instance, right now, those pumpkins that you'll be getting. That's a result mm. of the hard work of bees doing their pollination. They also provide, you know, apples. Uh, they pollinate for blueberries, for oranges. I mean, these are really hardworking little guys here. And we have about a $15 billion agriculture industry that relies on bees. And then ultimately, we have to remember that they also give us a little honey. I'm going to try this. Take my glove off. Uh -oh. Wish me luck that I don't get stung here. But this is what goes in here closely. Uh -oh. There we go. Oh, oh wow. Can you, can you just try it? So, yeah, oh, wow. Whoa. Well, he's got his net on. He's got to take it here. Let's see. I don't want to. How are you going to do that? What? Yeah, what's oh, oh, oh. the net? Delicious. Did oh, you really? Yeah. Very yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> Yum. I'll pick some. It's an important story. Thank you, Carrie. Now to our ongoing series, Mr. Smith Goes To. Harry Smith is here, and this morning you're taking us to a small town where the local paper is a lifeline, but facing an uncertain future. Well, you know, we've heard a lot over the last couple of years about newspapers closing in big cities. One of the other words that comes up about a lot when we talk about changes in America, food deserts. Well, there's a new word in our lexicon called news deserts, mm. because as these small papers close down, Who's left to go to the city council meeting? Yeah. Who's left to go to the high school band concert, mm -hmm. right? Well, we went to Storm Lake, Iowa to look a little more deeply into it. That hum is music to a print journalist's ears. But for more and more small town and rural newspapers, it's feeling like the day the music died. We want to tell accurate stories and be honest. Art Cullen is the editor of Iowa Storm Lake Times. Circulation, 3300. His brother John is the publisher. We always wanted the newspaper to be a mirror on the community. They've worked together here for 30 years. Both have stopped drawing salaries to keep their paper alive. I went on early Social Security in May. So you're working for free? Mm, sort of, yeah. Yeah. The benefits are good. <laughs> no, I get health insurance and a free subscription. Colin jokes, but journalism is serious business here. His son Tom is a staff reporter. Wife Dolores writes features. And his fearless editorials have won him a Pulitzer Prize. But that sure doesn't pay the bills. I've got paychecks, you know, from years ago that I never cashed. Serious? Yeah, there's one right there. You don't cash them. When the things get lean, you just leave them in the drawer. To look across Iowa's endless green fields, one could wonder if any news happens here at all. But the state has some of the dirtiest water in the country, and its packing plants were hotbeds of COVID spread. 
I just <laughs> randomly grabbed this paper, and, and it's from uh, June 10th, 2020, and it says, with four dead, expert says BV not close to its peak in the pandemic. People just simply wouldn't know that people were dying here. BV is Buena Vista County, the Times its proud watchdog, but on a short financial leash. We're three hours from anywhere. That's what you'd lose. Then you'd lose the high school sports scores and you'd lose the new baby photos and, and uh, engagement pictures and the old bits. Papers like the Storm Lake Times are the tie that binds small towns together. While some of what they cover may seem quaint, what else they cover has consequence. Where there is a news desert that is no local newspaper, tax rates tend to go up. Corruption cases tend to increase, uh, even crime increases, because there's a certain amount of shaming that a local newspaper does when you get arrested for something. And it goes in the paper. It goes in the paper. You folks certainly do know how to make a body feel at home. Numerous small Iowa towns bear little resemblance to their depiction in Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. Immigrants have come here by the thousands, lured by jobs in the packing plants many Hispanic. Denison is a 50% Latino now. Yes, Denison, Iowa, Donna Reed's hometown. Upstairs, Lorena Lopez runs La Prensa, a free bi-monthly. La Prensa is the only paper in Spanish. It's the only newspaper that they have in their own language. In its 15-year existence, La Prensa has established valuable credibility in an age of mis- and disinformation. But COVID crushed La Prenza's ad sales, same as the Storm Lake Times. It's pretty bad. We lost money all during the pandemic. Were it not for the PPP, we would have closed. Cullen and his colleagues have gone on the road asking for funds to build foundation support for their papers. Uh, we really need to talk about uh, our survival. It may be the only way they can continue to serve. Why is it important, do you think, that this newspaper exists and continues to exist. Somebody has to tell the story of Storm Lake. There are bad things that happen here, just like there are bad things that happen everywhere. But there are many more good things. We have to remind people of that in the community that this is really a great place to live. And I think one of the things that we lose in this is that these papers really foster a sense of goodwill in the sure. towns, yep. right? So the front page paper from the week we were there, the big story on the front page is how the local thrift shop in 15 years raised fifth, a twi uh, sorry, $2 million Ooh. for the local parochial school, yeah. wow. right? Yeah. That's news. And as people see something like that, it's not the same as a little blurb on, on the school's web page, or, yeah. right? Absolutely. You frame the paper, you save the paper, like you said, from births to obituaries, I mean, it's your community. Yeah, you're when you touch something. Yeah, exactly. So when your Girl Scout, Scout troop sells more cookies, mm -hmm. you clip that out and put it and on the refrigerator, the right? Yeah. Absolutely. And the accountability that he, the editor yeah. talks yeah. about. To uh, Art Cullen is, is a beast. He yeah. lets no stone unturned, and well, as you, you saw, the this way. is a story that could be repeated in a lot of communities, many, a lot of towns, many places, all over, all over the country. And so people, now what? Yeah, people have unique problems sometimes everywhere where you can't go to a lawyer, you can't go to the police. Mm -hmm. So you go to the newspaper right. to get your problem solved. And if you remove that, it's Good. just bad. Really well said. Yeah. And uh, there are just amazing pieces in this story, including there was a story 50 years ago that the uh, Hells Angels motorcycle group was going to come to the, come to the town. So people were getting married this weekend. They interviewed them and said, what did you do? <laughs> they had the, they said they had to hide their car in a barn <laughs> because they were so concerned that the Hells Angels were coming. Here is such an important story. We're always so open our eyes, Harry. Yeah. Thank you. We've been waiting for this one. Our next guest, the definition of multi-talented. Ludacris is a three-time Grammy Award-winning rapper, actor, entrepreneur, and most important of all, dead. Amen. Today, Ludacris is celebrating the release of his new animated series. It's called Karma's World, inspired by his oldest daughter of the same name. Now, in this show, Karma is a middle schooler who is also an aspiring musician. She has talent and heart, but she struggles with accepting herself, including her name. Look at this. Hey, Costa. Uh, I, I mean, Carrie. What's up with wanting to change your name? <sighs> Carrie being some of the kids made fun of it today. So I, I just want to change it to something that's not so weird. 
Well, I like to think of it as unique. You see, your mom and I chose karma because as soon as we met you, we knew you were going to be one of a kind. And you deserved a name as special as you are. <sighs> oh. oh, I wish I had that when I was coming up. Ludacris, good morning. Good morning. Luda. Good morning, guys. What's going on, man? Oh, I love we, talking to you guys in Yeah, the morning. listen, I would not be doing my job if I did not, first of all, reference the fact that you are wearing a Versace robe for your interview. <laughs> of course he is. Oh. Are you? Make it, I have uh, Versace slippers over oh. here, too, just in case, you know, just throwing that out there. I was about to say, the only wow. other person I've ever seen interview in a robe on the show was J-Lo, but then he just topped it with the, with the shoes. Okay, so let's talk about yes. this show. Almost 15 years in the making. Talk to me about how uh, this came about. So my, my oldest daughter, when she was six years old, she used to come into my home studio and interrupt me while I was doing all these hit songs that people know of Ludacris today. And she used to say, Daddy, I want to rap, too. And I had to sit her down and say, if you want to do music, you have to talk about what goes on in your life and your world. And at the time, you know, it was about education, learning morals, occasionally having fun and a lot of things that she was going through. <laughs> and this just birthed this idea. And we came up with all these great songs, which, of course, it took some time to uh, go through the ups and downs in different phases. But uh, the animation coming up with the storyline. So, yes, you said almost 15 years. This is a decade and a half in the making. And today is finally worldwide in 191 countries on Netflix. Wow. And I could not be more proud. So when you how much input did Karma have? I mean, she's you know, she's 20 now. But I mean, yeah. obviously, these were things that affected her growing up. Yeah, I, so she this had to be a real collaboration. Aww. 100 percent. And like you said, a lot of the storylines were based off her real life and things that she went through. And we know that a lot of children go through these, these things, especially with the pressures of the world today. So this show is going to change the world for the better. You know, it's tackling issues such as, you know, body shaming and, and self-expression and self-esteem. Mm. So I guarantee you this is going to change the world. And I could like I said, I just need everybody to go to Netflix and check it out because it's it's life it, it's life changing. It, life Ludacris, changing. it really has been uh, 15 years in the making because Karma's 20 years old now, yeah. and she's going to the historic Spelman College oh, in Atlanta. Nice, nice. I heard you showed up at on campus. Is that true? What? So you know, the good thing is that she was trying to pick a diff, you know, a bunch of different colleges, and she landed on Spelman, and I was like, yes, because <laughs> I can still drive, and she's within <laughs> arm's reach, and go check on her, make sure all the boys are in check. Oh, how did you know oh. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know who her dad is. I'm sure Karma loves that. Right, you and your wife Adoxy <laughs> welcomed your fourth daughter. I remember we talked about it here on the show, a uh, chance in July, but you almost missed the birth. What happened? So I um, I was shooting a movie with Queen Latifah um, that's coming out on Netflix uh, next year, and I was in New Mexico. Oh, wow. So what happened was the wife called me and was like, you need to get to Atlanta right now. And I, it was already afternoon on the West Coast, and I couldn't find a commercial flight out, obviously, without having to take the red eye. So, you know, humbly speaking, I have my own plane for, <laughs> for a long time. So I had to call my uncle, who's my pilot, to fly from Atlanta immediately to come get me in New Mexico wow. in order to come back. And I made it two hours right before wow. it was time. Wow. So there you go. There you go. And in fact, uh, we have a little gift for you guys. Uh oh. <laughs> It's a little, <laughs> a little third hour today onesie. We put third hour today on there Thank because you. she's our new little buddy. I can't wait to, right. to meet her. So, uh, so, you go. so really quickly, Luda, what's it like? I mean, you got four girls, your wife. You're the only, you're, you're the only man in the house. What's that like? Well, you know, uh, I have 22 acres of land, and I go outside as much as I possibly can. And pretty much this house is there, so, you know, I pretty much live outside. I got you. And by the way, share. your pumpkin game, very strong, my friend. <laughs> right. Beautiful pumpkin. Game. Thank you. Ludicrous. My wife will appreciate that you said that. She, she's the one who did all of this. Tell her what we appreciated we appreciate it this morning. Karma's World, it's on Netflix today. Congratulations. We love talking to you. Thank, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, the weekend's about to begin, Jenny. I know. What do you have planned? I'm so excited. We're going to go to a little fall carnival with my kids. The same fall carnival I went to a couple years ago. And when we got on the pirate ship ride, I started yelling, stop this ride right now. <laughs> it's scary. I forgot. So that'll be fun. Okay, now for some fun in 21 Halloween edition. And today we're going to help you throw an unforgettable monster match. Yeah, we're talking about food, we're talking about drinks, decor, and more with the help of lifestyle expert Yvette Rios, who has party ideas for kids and grown-ups too. Take a look. 
Halloween is my favorite time of year. So I'm gonna share with you guys some of the things we're doing here at our cabin for Halloween. So starting out, celery and peanut butter is perfect for the kids table. But what I did was I added chocolate chips to create little creepy insects. Roasted potatoes, easy breezy. Lots of kids like roasted potatoes, but what you can do is make them into little shrunken heads by poking out eyes and a mouth. Donuts are such a kid favorite, but why not include a little takeaway treat like some vampire teeth in there, add some googly eyes, and they're so, so super fun. Strawberries and yogurt are such a treat. Just dip the strawberries in, add some chocolate eyes, and you're good to go. And my son, Rex, personally like loves a hot dog, so I try to find ways to make them fun. So I made these mummy dogs by adding some crescent rolls and wrapping them around there, or some spiders. Super cute and super duper easy. And then lemonade is always a nice treat, but with a couple of drops of food coloring, you can actually turn it into black lemonade, which looks really mysterious and spooky. And then to add to our creepy vibe, I created this little specimen area over here. Super easy, start with water, add the inside of a highlighter, throw it in there, and you've got these great fluorescent colors with a black light, it looks amazing. And of course you need some fun Halloween activities for the kids. What do you guys think about tic-tac-toe? Okay, cool. So I've got some pumpkins. I just painted them with O's and X's. White for one team, orange for the other. Who's gonna go first? Okay, skeleton go first. Okay, but I've got another little trick up my sleeve. This is so fun. It's a sensory game. So basically what you do is you put all kinds of creepy things in these and then the kids have to guess what they are. I still think this is a lizard brain. You think it is? Uh -huh. Dragon skin! Oh, you are right, dragon skin. And because Halloween is not just for kids, the adults have to have fun too. Here are some really easy ways you can decorate for the adults. Of course, you need a bar. And I've got my wonderful bartender, Wilfred, over here. He's looking a little thin, but he makes an amazing cocktail. This is a monster margarita. It's got cilantro, jalapenos, tequila. Super delicious and easy. Just throw it in the blender. This is a very simple centerpiece idea. I just grabbed some dried flowers and added some skeleton hands in there to make it nice and spooky. The wreath is super easy also. Just start with a regular twig wreath, spray paint it black, and then add some crows on there. They're always on the lookout, you know, trying to take care of things. And for our table, the centerpiece is actually old liquor bottles. I took the labels off and then I mod podged them with paint and a little food coloring to make them dark like this. So super easy. And this is stuff you would have just thrown away. And then I grabbed some branches from outside to make an easy centerpiece. We need a Halloween spread here. So I've got a graveyard charcuterie board. This is just all kinds of cheeses, whatever you'd like, but instead of just cutting the cheese normally cut, the soft cheese as a coffin. You can add some gravestones on there. So super fun. And then I've got a punch bowl here. This is a sangria. Really easy. Start with a red wine, a nice dry red wine. Add some lychee eyeballs and whatever fruit you want. A little ginger ale and maybe a little orange juice. It's absolutely delicious. Candied apples are perfect for this time of year, but these are black candy apples. They are so creepy looking and so super easy. Just add some food coloring into your normal candy and dip your apples and you're good to go. And then I've got some carpaccio wrapped eyeballs. Mozzarella ball, stuff it with olives, wrap it with the carpaccio, super easy. And I've got a roasted cauliflower brain that's got oozy blood on the inside. The blood is actually beet hummus, it's absolutely delicious, and the cauliflower is the whole head of cauliflower roasted with a little salt, olive oil, and then I made some crackers out of tortilla chips, and I used a cookie cutter to get the great shapes. And for our piece de resistance over here, these little ghosts are so easy to make. You start with a balloon, use a Sharpie or paint to paint eyes and a mouth, and then gauze to wrap around it, and you can drape the gauze however, and they are so fun. I love it when they blow in the wind. They look like real phantasms. Happy Halloween, and uh, stay spooky. The weekend's about to begin, and look, behind us, all the cameras are blank because everybody is getting ready for the weekend. Hope you'll tune in next week. We have stars galore, Gwyneth Paltrow, Sir Elton John, 
Ted Lasso himself, like Jason oh Sudeikis. Oh my gosh. Where's Al Roker, him. his favorite. Plus the pioneer woman, our pal, Ree Drummond is stopping by with recipes from her new cookbook. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys Monday. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.